Hey everyone, Kendra here. I'm back with another Halloween themed video today. In today's video, I'm going to show you our most favorite Halloween books. And the last one, I took you on a little tour of our Halloween themed spooky cart. You can see it back over here in the corner. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will leave the link for you down below. Be sure to check it out because I had a lot of fun putting it together and we've loved having that in our house this last month. But let's go ahead and jump to the books. I have a lot to show you. I'm gonna go over them pretty quickly, um, but I will leave information down below of the name of the books and the author just in case I miss something and you you would like to find these books yourself. I'm gonna show them to you in no particular order, okay? Although I will tell you our most favorite one whenever I get to it. Up first is Little Blue Truck. Little Blue Truck can do no wrong, guys. We love all of the Little Blue Truck books, and the, uh, the illustrations are always so precious. So in this one, Little Blue Truck, he uh, he goes out to pick to pick his friends up to go to a Halloween party. So as he's driving along, he sees his friends in their costumes, and you get to guess who is under each costume. So for those of you who don't know, I am also a preschool teacher. So a lot of these books are not only loved by my boys, my three-year-old and five-year-old, they're also loved by a school full of preschoolers. This is a hit as well at school as well as at home with my own children. Just really, really cute. Um, this one, Room on the Broom, is a great one to watch. Not, not a great one to watch, but a great one to read because it also has a movie that goes along with it. And the movie is actually the same as the book. It's on Netflix. Um, we love watching it. We watched it last year. We did it again this year. And this would be a fun one to read and then as a little reward, have a fun Halloween themed movie night and watch the movie with your kiddos. So in this one, the witch starts off on the broom. A big gust of wind comes and knocks her witch hat off. And that's where the story begins. As she goes to collect her hat, she encounters a bunch of fun little furry creatures that end up joining her on her broom. Both of my boys really love this book. And it does get to be part of it's a bit repetitive where they end up joining her on the broom, which is fun for little kids when books repeat like that because they can kind of, um, they know what's coming up and what's going on and they can start to learn the words and say them along with you as well if they're not reading yet. Really cute, we love this one. This is a new one that we added this year and it's not necessarily Halloween, but it does have a monster in the book. Um, so I included it on our Halloween shelf. My preschoolers love this book as well as my boys. It's very interactive. It's called, There's a Monster in Your Book. So in this one, um, you open your book and discover there's a monster living in your book. And the book gives you different, different prompts to help get this monster out of your book. So it will have you do things like shake the book. So if you're reading this at home, you can pass the book to your children and have them shake the book. It has you tickle the monster. So they, of course, think that's fun. Um, you will tilt the book to try to get the monster out. So it just has you do all kinds of fun, different things to try to get the monster out of the book. At the very end, you end up getting them out of your book and you realize, oh, he's out of the book, but now you have a monster in your room. And then you have to try to get him back in the book because who wants, to who wants a monster in their room? So just a really easy, fun, interactive one. This would be great for little kids. I feel like corduroy books are such classics and I love the illustrations in this book. I am a big sucker for illustrations. You will see me talking about that a lot when I'm talking about these books. Um, but the storyline's really fun in this one and it's also interactive because it's a lift to flap. You will also see that we love lift to flap books in our family um, during this video. So in this book, Corduroy just has lots of fall fun with his friends. And that, like I said, there are some lift to flaps on each page that you can do with your children. They go to the pumpkin patch, they go shopping for a costume, and pick up some treats for their party. Oh, actually on this one, they're having a window decorating com uh, contest, sorry. Now they're at their party. And he has all of his friends come along and then they go trick-or-treating together. How cute are these illustrations? And you can uh, lift the, the, the flap on each one of the costumes and you can have your kiddos guess who is in the costumes. So we love that one. This is a big hit with my three-year-old. All right, so in regards to me talking about how um, Little Blue Truck can do no wrong, 
These next few that I show you also fall in that category. Pete the Cat. Pete the Cat is a huge hit for all the kiddos, right? My boys love Pete the Cat. Our preschoolers love Pete the Cat. And this is, and I think this is a newer book. I think this one came out this year. I could be wrong. No, it came out last year, 2017, but it's new to us. Um, it's a fun story. The illustrations are bright and colorful. And Pete the Cat goes trick-or-treating, and as he's trick-or-treating, he encounters some things that he thinks are spooky, but he realizes it's just his friends. So I think this would be a really fun one to read before you take your kiddos trick-or-treating. My boys, um, you know, they're, they're younger, so all of those really creepy, spooky houses that have the things that are maybe intended more for older children still really scare them, and we tend and just skip over those houses. Um, but we do talk about how things are not real and this is just part of the holiday and it's just like pretend. And this kind of fits along with what um, we tell our boys as far as like, it's not real, it's just like a decoration and don't, you know, don't be afraid by it. So this kind of goes along with that. But it's a really cute story and has, of course, Pete and all of his friends along on the adventure. Oh my gosh, how stinking cute is Emma? Look at how cute she is. Ah, so cute. Um, and Pete the Cat's a hit and Splat the Cat's another one. I actually have two Splat the Cat books to show you and we love both of them. They are both big hits at my school as well. Um, this, is, this is called Splat the Cat, What Was That? So in this one he goes trick or treating and he goes up to a spooky house. They go inside the spooky house and it's just very similar to this one where they see things that they think are creepy or maybe a ghost but they realize it's not what they think it is and this is also a lift a flat book i just think the illustrations and spot the cat books are always so cute so um and one of them like when he's in a closet and he thinks there's a monster but really it's a jacket um he thinks that there's something groaning but he goes downstairs and it's the radiator um and then they go throughout the whole house and at the very end, you can see them with all their candy. Really, really cute. This is another Splat the Cat book. Um, and this one, this was a gift for my mom, isn't that fun? It's always fun, people write notes. In fact, I opened this one up in my classroom the other day and I'd forgotten that she'd given us that one and it was just like a sweet little reminder. Um, okay, so this one, Splat the Cat goes to school. They're having a party and there's an award for whoever has the spookiest Halloween costume. So he is trying to decide what he wants to be for Halloween. Um, he ends up going as a spider. And then you get to see what all of his friends dress up as. And then there is a award for the spookiest Halloween costume. So you can see who wins the Halloween costume at the end of the book. But huge hit in my class, they love this one. All right, I know I'm gonna say this a lot, but these are all fun. I mean, that's just part of the holiday, right? Halloween is fun, but this is a silly one. My students get such a chuckle out of this book, as do my boys. It's called Turkey Trick or Treat. So in this one, Turkey, and all of the barn animals are starting to notice that little boys and girls are trick-or-treating and whenever they do, they get candy. Look, and they see how they're like drooling and they're like, ooh, candy, delicious. And they wanna get a part, they wanna get in on that action. So they decide that Turkey is going to go trick-or-treating and he is going to dress up and try to fool Farmer to give him candy. So they come up with different Halloween costumes for him, but he is just not smart enough to trick Farmer. And every costume that's suggested, which is what my class always gets the biggest kick out of, like a turkey dressed as a ballerina. Um, they suggest that he dresses as a pirate and he rides the cow in. But anyways, he's not successful. And on the very end, he decides to go to a different house with a, with a woman who is a little bit older and maybe doesn't have the best eyesight and he decides that he may not even need a costume after all. His costume could be himself and perhaps he can get some candy by just going as a turkey. And in the very end, you see that they were successful. Another really great fun one. Seriously, the kiddos like actually LOL when they read this one. 
So this one is a lip to flap book. I talked about this in when I was talking about our spooky cart. My boys are a little bit old for lip to flap books, but we still really like them. Um, they're so good for road trips and we always take a fall road trip. So I like to grab them whenever I see them. Like this one will be great for our fall road trip. But I like this one in particular, which is why I'm showing you this one because it's a great educational um, lip to flap book. It gives you different prompts, but the prompts are like, find a circle, find, two red apples, find five pumpkins, things along the lines of that. And they have to look through the pictures until they can find the prompts that the book tells you to look for. I know there's a lot of Mickey Mouse fans out there, so I wanted to show this one to you. Now, I was really lucky enough to find this one at Ross, and it was $3.99, which is a pretty good deal, but I find a lot of really great lift to flat books when I'm out thrift store shopping also. Um, I bet you I can get this one, you can get this one on Amazon. I will link it if I can find it. But this is a fun page because everybody's in their costumes and you have to kind of guess who's in which costume and then you can lift a flap and find out if you're right. So this is a fun one. My three-year-old really likes that book. Okay, these last two are most favorite Halloween books. They're a huge hit at my school. In fact, this year, several of my students requested that I bring one of these back in, and for a preschooler to remember a book a whole year from when they last read it is a big deal, because they forget everything very quickly, but they remembered, and it was a big hit again this year. My boys love this one. Monster Trucks. This one's really fun to read. It rhymes. And it gives you lots of opportunity to do fun, creepy voices, which I like to do when I'm reading to my kiddos or my students. So in this one, it's just like a, it's a monster truck race, but it's a monster truck race with monsters and like actual monster trucks. Um, they're all different. There's a Frankenstein truck and a wolf truck. There's a zombie and a ghost. They get so excited about these different trucks and the sounds that you can make. Um, and they all, like in my class, they'll all pick, like I'll say, which one's your favorite? And they'll all kind of shout out their favorites. And then we talk about who do you think's gonna win? Well, in this, there's a little twist because all of a sudden, this little blue van shows up and she is teeny tiny. And you try to decide if she's going to be able to beat all of these. Sorry, I'm trying to look at what's getting in the camera over. So I'm kind of like looking at the viewfinder, sorry. Um, she's trying to, you're trying to decide if she can beat these monster trucks. So throughout the book, she kind of um, outsmarts them and does different things to make them crash or get out of the race. And in the very end, I'm gonna spoil it for you, but she wins, and you real you learn that she is in fact also. Oh, there she's winning. A monster truck herself. So cute, really, really cute. Our most favorite Halloween book. It's a huge hit at home. It's a huge hit in my class, and that was the one that my kids requested again this, this year. This next one's a big hit at school and home. I was lucky enough to find this one at a thrift store, um, but because we love it so much, honestly, I would be happy to pay full price for this book. Uh, I will say, though, it is, a, of all the books I shared, this is probably the one that is, if you're gonna say creepy, it's a tiny bit creepy. I'll show you why whenever I'm showing you the pictures, but I've read it to my three-year-old, and I've read it to the preschoolers, and they all handled it just fine. And I probably kick up the creep factor when I read it because I do add spooky voices and turn the lights off and kind of make it a little bit more creepy. But you don't have to do any of that stuff. So this one's about Little Rabbit. So in this book, Rabbit is realizing he's no longer a baby anymore. He's growing up. He's wanting to be brave and do things on his own. And along with that storyline, he needs some new undies. So he goes to the store and his mom wants him to get these white ones, but he wants to get these super cool, creepy ones. But then Rabbit gets home and he realizes that these underwear, they glow in the dark and they are actually kind of creepy. So throughout the story, Rabbit's trying to get rid of the underwear because he decides he doesn't like them. But he's trying to do it all without his parents catching on because again, he's trying to be a big rabbit now and he's no longer afraid of anything. So he does things like stuffs them in a hamper, 
puts him in the trash can. And the part that's a little bit creepy is that no matter what he does to try to get rid of these scary underwear, they continue to come back. And when they come back, they always look a little bit creepy. So that could scare some kids. So in the very end, he takes these undies and decides to bury them. So he goes way up to this big hill, digs a big, big hole, drops them down to the bottom, and decides that that's enough and they will no longer be around anymore. And then he goes back home and he realizes without those glow in the dark, creepy underwear, it's actually kind of dark in his room. And he starts to kind of miss this is him realizing how dark his room is. The kids always laugh at this part. Big eyeballs in the night. He realizes he kind of misses his underwear. So he goes back, digs them out, and brings them back home. And the underwear are happy because they found an owner that's not afraid of them. He's happy because he's got a little night light back in his room. He goes back to the store and he buys several pairs of these creepy underwear and decorates his room with the underwear. Really cute, really fun. It does have a bit of a creepy factor, but I think it's fine for younger kids uh, as long as they're, you, you know your children, so you know what they can handle. All right, handle. that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you found some new to you books that you can pick up. I will be sure to leave information for all the books down below. Happy reading.